Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Requiem, our homebrew Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign. Welcome everyone in chat and welcome to the party. You can say hi to everybody if you would like. Hello. Hello. There we go. Alright, so before we move, uh, we move into the actual session, just a couple things to get out the way. So, first of all, Spotify, still the same thing. Whenever I can do it, I'll warn you guys about it on the, the session that happens afterward and all on the social medias. Uh, but next week, so that will be on the weekend of the 22nd of July. Next week, we're going to have our session on Sunday. So the 23rd of July at the same time, 9 p.m. GMT plus one or 9 p.m. Central European Summertime or 4 p.m. Eastern um, for the Americans. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we're going to have the, the our session on Sunday instead of Saturday. So put it on your calendar so that you don't forget, bitches. Um, next uh, up from that, now uh, I, I have now opened up the possibility for anybody who wants to play D&D with me as a dungeon master to do so. Uh, for that, you have to, if you're on Twitch right now watching live, do the following command that I'll do on chat called DM me uh, and you will have access to a link where you can book a session. Otherwise, just DM me whenever, wherever you can find me on Twitter or something like that. Um, for those that are watching on YouTube, the link will be down below. Obviously, as of now, the only session available is a one shot. So um, that is the only thing that you can book. But in the future, there will be campaigns and all of that. But yeah, it is now opened up. And if you want to do it, you already know where I'm at. If you are on Spotify, come over to YouTube and check the link below. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you, Trish. Um, all right. That covers all of the announcements that we had. So uh, if everybody around this here place is ready to go, I say we roll out the intro. I'm and rolling. we Let's begin. Roll out Autobots. All right. Ten. Ten. There we go. That is a pretty good intro you're rolling out, dude. That's average. An average intro. So, guys. We'll see you on the flip side eight. for episode <laughs> three. So, my friends, before we begin, let's do a quick little recap of what happened on last episode, and it will be quick. So, on the last episode, after Velox Moors broke apart and joined with Emily, or Emily joined them, they began their journey down south of Ipsa towards Soguk. They left Vulcan and have traveled for roughly two weeks or no actually no not two weeks at all roughly six days <laughs> i don't know why i said two weeks same difference R <laughs> roughly six days um and have had some strange things happen to them one of them they found a corpse a carcass of a toad a giant toad the size of a horse down the road and violet in trying to remove one of the warts that would be valuable to them got a little bit of pus uh, splashed on her face. It was not very nice. After that, as they were traveling, their cart was attacked. 
by a huge bird, a K-Duel, a giant black bird with red eyes and a stone beak, the apex predator here in the red wasteland of Kimili's grasp. And with one fell strike, he brought down Emily, who was knocked unconscious from such, such power as he dropped down Dove Bomb literally on top of her. Still, they managed to beat the shit out of the bird and came out victorious and even collected some materials from, from the bird. After that, they decided to take their rest as their cart is now broken and they are left only with the two little creatures, the Gergafil, these um, kind of rhinoceros elephant mix uh, with small little trunks and two uh, tusks that usually are the beasts of burden here in Camille's grasp. And so, as they bed down for the night, Violet was going to take the first watch under the starry skies here in the wasteland. So, Violet, you sat down looking at the horizon. You, is there anything you want to do? Just look at the horizon <laughs> and think about how I saved Emily and she didn't, <laughs> she didn't thank me. And how she just reminds me of my daughter. Oh. And how, how does Violet feel after what happened today? Yeah, she's used to it. Fighting. Is, oh, I, I, I meant the fact that Emily didn't. <laughs> Not daughters dying. <laughs> <laughs> no, the emotional trauma. <laughs> <laughs> No, right. she, she feels like um, it, it's just, it's in the past. Um, everything that happens just goes to the past. It, she, she, she has her focus on, um, on the future now. All right, fair enough. So as you are taking the first watch here, I'd like you to roll a perception check for me, please. Perception. Uh, 15. 15. So, give me just a moment. Um, on a 15, as you're looking out into the night, just past kind of the, the light coming from your, um, from your, your fire, you notice the, um, your two Gurgafil, the two creatures that are with you, um, they kind of... They, they lift up their necks. They, they have pretty short necks, but they, they lift up their heads to um, look somewhere. And you notice just around, I would say, probably 100 feet from you, you notice the, the outline of two other Gurgafil. These uh, seem to be, however, wild uh, that are kind of just looking out towards the light and waiting out at a distance. I'll... Uh, okay. We need them, so... The, everyone is asleep, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll grab a little bit of ration. Mm hmm And I'll just... <laughs> okay, I, I won't do that, but I'll, I'll try to approach... <laughs> I just want to make sure that you understand these are not felines. I know, I know. Okay, all right. Um, Animal I'll handling I'll minus just... ten. Okay, okay, <laughs> wait. <laughs> I'll try to approach, put on the ground, mm -hmm. but just a little bit uh, near us, mm -hmm. and and leave it there, and go back a little bit again, again, again. Um, roll an animal handling check. <laughs> Come on, plus zero, plus zero. Oh, nineteen. Go. They don't approach the ration because <laughs> they don't eat that. They <laughs> smell it a little bit, but they don't eat those. They don't eat ration, and um, they they just they smell it. They kind of lift their little trunks up at you. It's it's this really really small, like about a foot long trunk, just uh, smelling in your direction. But they, yeah, it's actually it's not small. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty big, big honestly. It's pretty, big. It's, I, I <laughs> it's pretty big. It's pretty above everything. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty big. Um, and so you, 
they're, they're, they're smelling in your direction, but they don't seem to take interest in their actions. But they're not aggressive creatures. Do I know what they eat? Um, yeah, they, they eat uh, fungi, little mushrooms and things of the sort. They use their, their little trunks to uh, dig in a little bit and with their tusks as well. And they eat fungi and little ants as well. Do I find any on the ground where we are? Now that you mentioned that, as you look around uh, you here in the wasteland, it's not just the sky that is starry. The wasteland itself also is. There is glow coming from mushrooms of every color, from purples, blues, yellows, and, and bright greens. And, I mean, they're everywhere around. Okay, I'll try that. I just remember, oh, right, they eat mushrooms. Oh, stupid plant. <laughs> Okay, I'll just grab some some okay. mushrooms and I put them there. All right. And I say, shh. Okay. They smell the mushrooms. They eat a few, but they don't seem very hungry. Um, I mean, there's mushrooms everywhere. They could just take them if they wanted. And I'll try to, to pet one of them. All right. the, the trunk, like, very gently. Okay, as you do um, uh, approach them, one of them kind of moves back, but your two Gargafil move forward to kind of join you in this interaction, and they begin smelling you, and you hear this kind of almost piggish noise of... <laughs> and as you touch the trunk, it, it recoils, it's very sensitive, but then it wraps around your hand and um, lets you pet it. I'll just stay there a little bit, just petting them to see if they get to know me and my mm -hmm. smell and wait for one of them to wake up. All right. Then that is going to conclude your watch. We are going to um, do, for the purposes of time, only one more watch. Um, so whoever wants to take this watch is going to be able to interact with Violet and then the other watch won't be needed unless you guys want to, of course, say anything to each other. So, who's waking up I'll, for Violet? Uh, I'll wake up for once in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. G wakes up and you... <laughs> That's how I wake up. <laughs> What's going just... on here, Violet? We, I don't think we can afford more and more bad pets. More what? The bad pets. It's, it's just for us to ride it. Then why is your hand and, and uh, wrapped around its uh, trunk? I am trying to tame them. Because you cannot ride a wild animal, you know? Have you tried? No. I'm I've ridden a few wild w w w w w <laughs> animals. Okay. Okay, will you take this watch? Well, well yeah, but am I supposed to just uh, stay here wrapped with the, uh, the, 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 the animals? If you want. What's if you don't, just names? let them go. What's I don't their know. Name? I didn't give them names. How do you want them to be your friends? Okay, it's Bob and Welly. I don't like their name. <laughs> then, then pick some. Okay, I'll call them Violet. The I'm fat one. <laughs> good night. And I, and I go away. Good night. And I pet Violet. <laughs> Don't fucking touch me. No, no, you. <laughs> oh, Violet! <laughs> I can't believe this happened. <laughs> the elephant. The, the gurgle ghoul. Gurgafil, yeah. I'll the gurgafil, I'll just, gurgamel. I'll just go away and try to rest. Who's a good girl? Can I just pet her? It's a, it's a guy. Who's a good girl? Is it? Okay, I don't know that. Who's a, <laughs> who's a good girl? I mean, you could know if you wanted to. <laughs> no, no. I'm not gonna go under. Um, uh, just as, you, as you're petting it, could you roll, please, an animal handling check for me? <laughs> Six. <laughs> so, maybe you're not used to... Um, these creatures, but petting them with a metal arm is not a good idea. 
um, as they kind of feel the cold metal in their skin. It's kind of scrapey because their skin is rough. One of them moves away from you. Um, is it Violet? Uh, you were petting Violet, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so Violet begins running away from you. And I go, Violet. And I, I try to like, I grab my beard and I try to make a trunk out of it in front of my face. <laughs> and I shake my beard. I'm like, come, come here, come here. It's turned its ass on you and it's running away. Fucking God. One job. Do I have a rope on me? Um, I don't know. Check if you do. But yeah, runs... I do. Okay. I have you a want... rope. I want to like put a rope around its neck and try to hold it. <laughs> All right. Uh, make an attack roll with the rope. Uh, I'm gonna say this is gonna be an athletics check of yours. Um, contested. So I'm with an athletics a... check. Yeah, athletics check contested with uh, the Gergafil's athletics. Fourteen. Hmm. Uh, that is a twelve. So I beat. You you managed to beat it. Um, okay. I've reached I'm, I'm so holding low. it. Uh, you throw your uh, you throw the rope around it just as it's running, and you're holding it. And everybody, you now hear sounds of struggle. Of <laughs> Immediately awake. <laughs> and you all, you all Violet, shut up, Violet. The other ones, the the other one is now getting Riley uh, or uh, Rowdy as well, and it's going to try to bump you because you're holding. <laughs> Hold I'm up. Friend. I'm going okay. to You him. guys are running, but first. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Yeah, of course. Um, so one of them is going, temporary health. is going to, to try to bump you down and, and knock you prone. Uh, so let's see if it, it does that. I need you to roll a strength saving throw for me. Sixteen. You succeed, so you're not not prone, but you do take uh, seven points, uh, eight points of bludgeoning damage, as it bumps you, uh, trying to, to to help its friend. The other ones are backing away. The the ones that are already tame. Vesper, you you're running towards G. I'm going to G. What are you doing? <laughs> Vesper, what are you doing? Violet is running away. Violet is in the camp. Not that Violet, the fat one. <laughs> What are you talking about? The dog skipped them in the place. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to make sense of what's happening because I'm like Hold so on groggy. The animals, they're running away. We need them. <laughs> Which ones? A four of them. <laughs> so I have two hands. The one well, that I bumped you one. is running. The one that bumped you is running now. So you have one under your your rope, and the other one's running Go away. Go pick that one up. <laughs> Okay, I'll go after the other one that's running away. These are large creatures. They're the size of okay. rhinos. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't okay, but I have a metal arm and I'm very strong. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you're Never running... mind that. You're she not has animal handling. Gone. She can be friends okay. with animals. Okay, so... Well, Emily, Violet, are you to... doing anything? Violet is still awakened and she's sits cross-legged watching everything. Okay. Uh, Just with a smile on her face. Emily, uh, she's like exhausted from almost dying. So the moment she understood what was happening, she went back to sleep. <laughs> okay, so Vesper, Vesper, you're on your own here to help G. What are you going to do? I'm going to go to the one that he named Violet and try to calm it down. <laughs> no, the other one's running away. Get out of here. And I push her. <laughs> I can't catch that. Run. <laughs> I've seen you run. Run. He's gone. It's gone. <laughs> okay, you don't so pick it up. You're carrying me. <laughs> Wouldn't oh. be the first time. <laughs> All right, Vesper. No, the other one runs away. So that uh. you're tr you're trying to calm the one that's with G, right? Yes. <laughs> then I'm gonna say roll an animal handling check with disadvantage though, because it's it's pretty it's pretty you know stressed. Yeah, but it's being held by a rope. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. Um. Well. You guys see Vesper approach this creature. How do you intend to calm it down? I would just be talking very softly, be like, it's okay, it's okay. Just slowly walking up to it, where at the end of it's, it's at the end of the rope. Just like holding my hand out, showing that I have nothing, that I'm not harmless, kind of lowering down to the ground. All right. Uh, as you do that, um, you guys see the creature that's kind of jumping around and G locked his metal arm and is holding it uh, in, in place. 
as it jumps around circling, as soon as Vesper kind of approaches, the first reaction is to charge at her. Uh, because, you know, because of the, the wild kind of lizard looks. But as, as it approaches her, it begins settling down and begins smelling around as you see this sort of this this mist emanate from from vesper as her key begins to extend out into the creature and the creature begins slowly moving towards her and calms down in front of her i give vesper the rope <laughs> take it Let's and i take out one of my it. wrenches maybe it's broken no put that away <laughs> all right it's not like you're the genius <laughs> and i put it away this is a living creature not a machine <laughs> well why am i then you're g you're gramps that's all you are <laughs> see that's why i'm this smart one because <laughs> you're dumb fed enough <laughs> listen can I take out of my pocket? You don't tell Violet, the fatter one. You don't tell her what happened. Because I don't I think she saw. This was the fat one. No, yeah, this is the fat one. The other one is the fatter one. You don't. You don't tell her anything. I think. And I'll give you this for you to hold. And I give her the vitality restoration device. Mm. You keep this because you might. You might. <clears throat> I even changed my voice. You might <laughs> be better at healing than I am. That's, that's a fair point. Okay. I'll well, take it. I won't say. Have a good watch. And <laughs> I go is right behind him saying, I saw everything. I didn't see anything. And I go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> By okay. the way, what are the names of the, 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 the other two? I have no idea. Ah, well, I look at them. <laughs> that one is Grime. <laughs> and that one I'll leave up to you. And I just go back to bed. <laughs> I approve. Okay, so... <laughs> but I won't name it. <laughs> just to be clear, just to be clear about something. Um, this new one is now bound, or Violet, is now bound to Violet and Vesper. It will answer to both of you. Um, it will not it will answer... run away from me. Yeah, it will, it will probably <laughs> run away from G. But it will, uh, both Violet and Vesper, you guys can uh, can take control of it. We have a together. Them. This is our new daughter. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to uh, put the Vitality Restoration device in your inventory. Yes, sir. Oh, no. All right. So... I mean, I'm gonna say we're gonna conclude the watches from because <laughs> this was, watch. <laughs> this this was pretty eventful. So we're gonna move forward. Let's say the rest of the night uh, continues on with not uh, much problem. And so the next two day block begins for you, my friends. So I'm gonna need one of you to roll a d6 again. Please choose who, who does it. I'll go. <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'm. Three. I've done it. Three. All right. So, a three. I'm going to need you to roll now a d4 for me. One. One. All right. So, on this two-day block, as we approach uh, um, the, the midday of the 19th, uh, as you guys are still traveling, you're traveling on top of the Gurgafil this time, right? You're because you don't have a cart. Um, so I'm gonna say G can go on top of Gra that. Sounds terrible. G goes on top of one of them, um, and Emily, you can take the other one as well. Uh, Violet and Vesper, you probably would. You can distribute however you want, but you can you can both go on Violet, or you can uh, go on any other any of the others. Um, but anyway, you guys are riding, and just and just as you are, suddenly you feel the ground shake. Oh no. And as you look out in the distance, to the west, this giant cloud of dust rises, and it swells as emerging from it, you see a blackbird. 
uh, with a stone beak and red eyes. And it is carrying on its talons this giant... It, it looks like a giant red snake. And it's, it's, it has its talons on top of, of, of the snake. And the sn it, you see... Well, actually, at this distance... Yeah, you would see it. The snake's spine is broken. And it has oh. bones sticking out from where the, the cade will charged in, into it. Um, and then you see it l rise up in the sky and then drop it again. <sighs> Another cloud of dust. And then it continues flying up, folds its wings and <sighs> dives again. And <sighs> the, the ground shakes and dust is lifted up as it completes its hunt and dives back down onto the creature to make sure it is dead. Um, you guys manage to avoid it, uh, uh, avoid this creature, as it is um, busy with something else right now. Um, in fact, if I could have uh, you guys roll a perception check for me, please, to see if Everyone? you can- Everyone? Yeah, to see if you can spot what the creature it was hunting is. Perception 12? Okay. Seven. Twelve. What have you got, Ray? Sorry, I had to make sure it was not at disadvantage because it was set to that. Uh, twenty-two. All right. On a twenty-two, and even the twelves, you guys can see that 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 snake actually has legs, although tiny they are. It has a few legs, six, three legs on each side. So you you deem right six math. That's how it works. And it has. Uh, these small curved horns forward um, and just as it was lifted up in the air you swear you saw some sparks that is not a snake that is in fact a behir uh, behirs are another of the predators here in the grasp and they're these um, kind of semi-draconic snakes uh, that have a gland in their in their throats that uh, is filled with these chemicals that are able to uh, produce a spark and it shoots lightning out of its throat. Um, and still, the Cade Wool uh, did pretty short work of it. So uh, the thing that you guys killed uh, two days ago was uh, it's pretty impressive for Velox Moors, a pretty impressive kill. Uh, all right. I'm real sick of birds. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It, she, it, she ruled it. It's not my fault. Um, all right. So, two blocks, uh, two days have gone through. You guys bed down for the night. Uh, hey, what did I do to you? Sorry. <laughs> I get. <laughs> I know. Um, but let's, uh, instead of going down and, and doing the whole sleeping thing, I would say, unless you guys have anything to talk to each other uh, about, I would say we skip to the next two-day block? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then I'm, I'm going to need someone else to roll a d6 for me. I, can... I got it. All right, Emily, she hasn't rolled anything yet. I have. I, I rolled the first one. Oh. I think Ray should... No, I mean today. I mean, but sure, Ray, oh. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> d6. Three. A three? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Stop. We we haven't had that. We haven't had that yet. Uh -oh. um, roll another d6 for me. Uh oh. Two. A two. Okay. God, so many fucking little fucking. All right, found it. Careful, people. We haven't had that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you guys are wandering through the wastes, um, at I would say it would be morning of the um, morning of the the last day of this two day block. You notice a clump of strange looking fungi bursting out of a rather large rock, uh, not too far from the road that you're traveling. Uh, they have this kind of long stem that ends on a wide platform of like flubber looking material. You can't really see the top. Uh, uh, of this organism, but uh, the stem is light blue, and from underneath, uh, you can see that the 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 top s kind of sort of slowly transitions from that light blue to a purple with light pink spots. 
Uh, but it is not too far from the road, and it's these giant stems that lift probably, I would say, around 15 feet in the air. Um, what do you guys do? Do you guys want to go take a look? Do I recognize these mushrooms as anything in particular? Roll a nature check for me. Uh, uh, would I know since I'm from this area? Yeah, you can do that too. 18. 18. 18! <laughs> wow, you guys are coordinated. <laughs> you guys are synced, huh? Um, <laughs> so, on an 18, you know what these are. Ex exactly, actually. These are shade haft mushrooms. And the pink spots are actually sacks of a very valuable material that is kind of similar in consistency to sap, and it is part of a light-sensitive gland. So, what this does is, and with an 18 you would know, the sap helps the fungus change coloration of the top, of its top, to match a similar one that is, uh, of what is underneath it. Hence having this light-sensitive gland beneath where the, the pink spots are. So, this camouflages the fungus. You would also know, since you did an 18, that a vial of this sap sells for 50 gold. And... One of the glands, if you actually manage to remove a gland, 150 gold. And they are both used to make potions that when they're poured over someone, um, it helps you camouflage. Do we have any do we want vials that? left? <laughs> I don't. I just have a water skin. <clears throat> Everybody emptying water skins now. <laughs> We already filled one with Kato blood, or was it? Yeah, the Kato blood, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you guys want it, or should we continue? Be nice, but the two of you are the ones who know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we share the information. Yeah. Where will we store it? <laughs> That's in your the mouth. Problem. My mouth. <laughs> I think I might die. Good. This is where Velox Moore ends. <laughs> sure. I knew the day was coming. If we don't have any vial, then then just we we just keep going. We. Oui, oui. All right, you guys Let's keep go. going. <laughs> Very well. Well, my friends, I guess you just missed out on gold. Sucks. So. <laughs> I will regret it. Me carrying no. two eyeballs. <laughs> True. <laughs> <On my arms. laughs> um, Alright, so, my friends. After around 10 days of traveling, you finally arrive at the Ash Caldera. This is, I'm going to say, the morning of the 22nd. You see these twisted curved red stone pillars that rise from the ground, the remains of an ancient and possibly large volcano, or so it is thought. Around it, you see green leaves, trees, vibrancy, and life. At the end of the road that you're traveling, just downhill, you see market stands and open taverns and travelers that are, you know, just moving about and... and uh, conversing carts and wagons that are parked. What is it that you do? Uh, is this the entrance of uh, Sokak? No, this Not is the yet. no. This is the Ash Caldera. You still have to go through it by uh, on one of the boats, and then after that, you will finally reach Sokak. Oh, we should probably find a place to sell the stuff we got. Uh, is there like any? Or maybe sell only on, in Sokak. Because the merchants are probably richer there. Well, yeah, and the materials will be rarer there. Mm. Yeah. Well, fair. there's nothing in specific, so maybe we want to make our way to to the docks and see if we can find ourselves a boat. All right. Yeah. yeah. Easy enough to do. So you guys uh, push past this place, and as you do, you you can you you see people climbing up the the slope of this, uh, um, the remains of this volcano, on their uh, horses, Gergafil and, and other creatures. Um, you see them actually 
Uh, some of them are mounted on this, this mounted on this um, a sort of um, ostrich-like creature, but kind of like a bird of terror sort of deal with a long neck and a very large beak. Um, and that walks on two legs with small little wings. Uh, but they all climb up uh, that slope, and as you guys continue on, uh, you move in between two of those large, jagged, natural pillars, and um, you climb up to the top, and at the end, you see a vast expanse of water, an immense lake. Um, and a little ways down, uh, if, you, if you go down into the actual crater, let's say, uh, there is a dock, indeed. Uh, and right as you guys are arriving, there is a very large but flat-looking boat that is uh, docked currently there. And you see people starting to board uh, that boat. Okay. Well, that's our trip. There. Do, how do we know that that's the one? There's only this one. And it, it, there's only, like, one route coming out from this city? Yeah, it's the, the, the way this works is people people... Uh, take the boat here to go to the other uh, side of the caldera and go to Soguk instead of having to go around the caldera and waste a bunch of time okay. Do um, we see someone like taking tickets or boarding people guiding people? You do you see a, a young tiefling uh, gentleman um, wearing uh, this this <laughs> It looks like a sailor shirt but it looks better than what a sailor shirt should look like like it's pretty okay. clean and it has a sash around the waist um and he is um, he is taking uh, he is taking people in, and you see them all give the, give him uh, a piece of silver. Okay, so I walk up to him. <laughs> Hi, good sir. Hello there, welcome. I am uh, G from Velox Morse. Uh, me, my friends, and Violet, we wanted to to to, to uh, go across the. Um, Water. All right. That how, will. Uh, how much? That will it? be a silver piece, uh, each of you, and then uh, a silver piece for the animals, if you wish the animals to board as well. Uh, Violet. It's um. It. Uh. Four, five, six. It's seven pieces of silver. We, you we need have... to pay this, sir. Uh, why seven? We are eight, right? We have three... Three beasts. Three gurgles. We're four. What? We're four. Right? We are, we are four. Yeah. Plus three. I, I was counting to the M. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to! <laughs> I mean, I was bad at math, but holy... <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing five people on the call, okay? So. <laughs> hey man, I'm going! So yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't think they charge for God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry then. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pay seven, 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 seven. As, as you do, um, the young gentleman goes, thank you very much and enjoy your trip, courtesy of the Kralkoyu Okeanos of Soguk. And he... Okeanos? Yes, Kralkoyu Okeanos. Is... Okeanos. Yeah, you you would know this because you've been there. The Kralkoyu is the king of, of Soguk, and Okeanos Kral... is his name. Kralko... Kralkoyu, with two Ks. Kral... Koyu. <laughs> Koyu. Kral... Kralkoyu? <laughs> yeah. Okeanos. <laughs> All Keanus. Okay, and Anus. Okay, Anus. <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe I didn't notice that. Okay. <laughs> uh, not again. Not Hector is... Penis again. <laughs> what is uh, your name, by the way, young sir? My name is Marcos. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. And I just walk into the boat. Okay, he kind of just stares at you a little bit before going going to talk to the other uh, the other folks that are on the queue. As you guys uh, get in the boat, you see, first of all, the boat has no sails. The boat has no uh, sort of rowing mechanism, nothing. Uh, but as soon as you touch the ground of, or not the ground, the wood of the boat, you immediately sense kind of a certain lightness. To the to the boat, um, people are starting to assemble 
uh, tents and, uh, and 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 creating these this little spaces of dirt um, for for kind of like a little bit of raised up stoves and and and, and fires above the wood of the of the boat and after a while of you guys being here and a few more people boarding and you boarding up with the Gurgafil, you find your little corner and as the uh, gentleman that you you spoke to, Marcos, sees everybody is boarded, he touches the edge of the boat once with his finger and it begins moving in uh, the opposite direction. Um, so... As you guys are in here, this is going to be a journey of three days through the Ash Caldera. There, are, you're surrounded by people. Is there anything you guys want to do? Uh, I think I want to throw up. Go ahead. Uh, oh, great. And I look at Violet. Best. Which one? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope... Mm. <laughs> G. I'll just, I'll and I just swallow and it. Oh my God. Actually, roll a constitution check for me, please. Saving throw. <laughs> constitution saving throw, yeah. Do you want to get in on this? I'll get in on it with you. 20. Ah, you managed to swallow it easily. Yeah, I am pretty good at solo. <laughs> and then I wipe my beard, you know. I'm, I'm good. I see a G super, super pale, and I cast Precipitation uh, on G's clothes, so they're like super chill. Oh, you want to make them colder? I mean, is it really cold right now? Um. Well, actually, it, it's not, it's not, I would say it's not cold, like negative cold, but it is as you guys have been moving south, it has been getting colder, so it's no longer scorching heat. Let's keep in mind I walk around bare chested. <laughs> yeah, you guys are pretty. You guys are getting. You guys are getting pretty cold. Uh, but I would say that in a situation like this, he'd probably be sweating a little bit. Yeah, I'll, so I'll she, do it. As she does that, I see that my arm doesn't move anymore. It's way too cold for metal. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I mean, the arm isn't clothes. I specify the clothes. Yeah, it's, it's, clothes. Covered, it's covered by my cloak. <laughs> okay, then, <laughs> then it is. <laughs> huh. Well, I guess I won't be handling any more animals for a while. That's I just probably stand there. the best. <laughs> I, I stand there. I sit with my legs wrapped. Right, I'm sitting, just sitting there, <clears throat> wiggling my, my feet. I'll just, um, I'll get up. And uh, I start some mushrooms for the Garifil? the beasts, and I will feed them. Very well. No. Okay. <laughs> I walk up to the beast. <laughs> <No. So, laughs> we so, agreed you were not going to touch her. <laughs> um, for this day, uh, or actually for these three days. How about we go on another event table? I'm gonna need uh, one of you to roll a d4 for me. A d4? D4. I'll do it. Do it. Oh. Oh. One d4. One. <laughs> oh boy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to roll a one. But you sure. did. So here we go. So. As you guys are sitting sitting down. Um, on your little corner, getting ready for you know these the the, the days of the of this journey. Um, do you notice? Kind of sit sit around your space, but a little a little bit um, away from you. I would say about you know 15 feet away from you. You see this uh, black scaled dragonborn. It has a spiked eye ridges uh, and horns that kind of just curve upward. He is. Um, he is sitting down and, and he made this little shrine in front of him. And you see uh, on that shrine a sculpture of a woman uh, wearing um, kind of a, a cloak and it has this very long hair and is positioned sideways with a bow 
with a it's bow like... on her on her hand and a, a knocked arrow on the bow, and she's drawing the string. She's drawing the bow, um, and the bow has this sort of like roots uh, all around it, and there's chains around uh, the arrow. And he's sitting down and uh, kind of having a moment of prayer, uh, looking at that figure. Do we recognize the the figure? Do I don't I know. Do recognize? you? Do you hear, did you we, hear the description I, I did? We see him, right? <laughs> yeah, you we do. all see him. But wait, this is I, important. Did you hear the description that I that I? I, I heard. Okay. I heard. It's a woman with a bow and the hood and the and the and the and the hair and chains on the hood on the on the bow. Okay. So okay. now you tell me. Do you recognize that? I do. All right. Then good. Violet. I try to like. Whisper. What? Ah. What? Damn. That, that dragon guy. Didn't you, uh... Didn't you show a pendant to, to Wily? That looked like that statue? Probably. <laughs> we saw it, right? We were at the table. <clears throat> You're yeah. single. You should totally go talk to him. You know, one of the most important things in a relationship is when two people like the same thing. And if, if you both are into women with bows and <laughs> chains, maybe you should... You, I know he's scaly, but nothing that some cream can fix with his skin condition, maybe? What's wrong with being scaly? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Gee. Yeah? You know I was married to a woman. Yeah? <laughs> that's, that's what I mean to. Okay, um, I can go talk to him. Are you interested? In women, yeah. <laughs> in him. No, but in his women. I've never been with the dragon. Could always try. Do you want to? Is there something you want to tell me, <laughs> best friend? Look, I'm just saying, it is good for you to explore I, your interests. I thought we were just friends. Like, she's not a dragon. <laughs> she's not. No. Oh. She's a lizard. <laughs> Yeah. Scales, tail, tall. I'll just get up and go talk to the to the dragonborn. <laughs> oh, Can I you? wink at her like? Okay. I will. Uh, all right. Um. Okay. So as you approach, he doesn't seem to kind of hear you approach. He just has his high, eyes closed and is kind of in a, a cross-legged position, uh, just focusing. On this little I'll shrine, just that he did. sit on 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 beside him and mm -hmm. just wait for him to open his eyes. Uh, I yeah. see this happening, mm -hmm. and so I cast a message, mm -hmm. and I go, "Hello!" <laughs> to him? Yes. Okay, so just so you know. So he's 15 feet away from me. This is gonna be very funny. I don't want you to go back on it, but I want to tell you exactly what's gonna happen. He's 15 feet away from you. Message, you need to speak into a wire. You yourself speak into a wire and someone hears it in your head. So what he's gonna hear is, hello, hello! Yes. <laughs> oh There's like a, a make, delay on your voice. So he I'll hears, wake him up. <laughs> so as, as Violet sits down, you wait and you do this. And a bunch of people and the Gurgif will kind of get startled when they hear you yell hello. Um, but he just goes, oh, and jumps back and <laughs> falls down <laughs> on the ground uh, or on the, the wood of the boat on the deck. And then he he gets up and sees Violet and he goes, oh, oh, oh was that you? Nope. She's single. <laughs> he, he, he's just to, to see where the sound, are, are the gods speaking to me? <laughs> no, it's me. Oh! He, he waves at you. I wave at him. <laughs> okay. Don't, uh, don't mind the gramps. Um, 
<clears throat> I'll, I, I noticed that you are praying to <clears throat> Meodreth. Y- yes, yes, I am. I am praying to the aspect of the huntress. Yes. Do you recognize this pendant? It's it's a coin, right? It's a coin. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a smidge bigger than a coin. Yeah. Yeah. Do you recognize this? Uh, he takes it. Yes, this is the symbol that we carry. This is a symbol of our faith. That is her bow, the root maker. What does she represent? Well, the huntress represents the hunt. It represents the search for a goal and the freedom that you find in that. Hmm. Okay. But why? See, I... This is going to sound so silly. I'm so sorry for this, but... I had a really bad nightmare and that coin appeared in my hand on the nightmare and I woke up with it. Oh, that is a miracle. You could say so, yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't really like that, but... um, Why? I believe the dream represented that my daughter would die so well have you thought that perhaps it was just a warning and it was the goddess giving you a gift so that you may avoid that fate I thought of that that's why I'm here well you remind me a lot of my brother He Can too I had a mirac- why? Yeah, he, he had a miraculous thing happen to him as well. A long time ago. Hmm. I am on my way to meet him right now. In Sokuk, I believe? No, that is just one stop of my journey. I have not seen right. my brother in 15 years. He, he is now the protector of Pelendan. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ask him his name. <laughs> <clears throat> and and what's your name? Um, uh, I am Ariandar Blackhorn. I'm G. Hi, G. Hi. <laughs> you you wanna come over here? No. Your friend, I presume. <sighs> Part of the guild. Not really a friend. Well, he seems to care about you. I don't think so. Hmm. Well, you also don't strike me as someone who would believe in the gods, and yet you carry a symbol, a miracle with you. I wouldn't say I don't believe in the gods. Um, I'm just... In my life, they're in theirs. I never had any direct contact with them, but I do believe in them, because my daughter, as I said, she has contacts (laughs) with the gods. She has connections. My god, how how do I say this without sounding like (laughs) she has some connects? (laughs) I I understand. Uh, He goes, well, you have a miraculous family then. I too thought that perhaps I shared in my brother's rather divine abilities, but uh, it was never the case. My brother, I used to speak to me through these messages in my head, kind of what I just heard. (laughs) Um, He used to send me one through one of his friends, a dragonborn, too. She could she could speak to me, but months ago it stopped. And so I figure that maybe something is wrong, although I wish I wish it isn't. And I am going there to visit him. 
uh, Violet and the Velox Mars don't know what happened in Pelendon, right? You know that uh, Pelendon is now where the Weave is. Uh, she Shit. did mention that Pelendon had been taken. Okay. Well, I, I wish you good luck and uh, have, a, have a nice trip. It's, it's a long way there. Uh, it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and if you if you indeed have this miracle coin with you perhaps remember that the gods like when we answer their call good because it's exactly what I'm doing and they have ears too I'll keep that in mind. He waves at G. <laughs> G waves back from a distance. And then he kind of, he gives a, a, a little bit of a bow to you, Violet, and adjusts the shrine that he had made before <laughs> Emily <laughs> screamed in, her, in his ears. And... Right. While Violet is leaving, I cast message again, and I go, Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> Goddess... <laughs> and you see him kind of visibly confused there. Um, all right, so you uh, return to your group. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else you guys want to do? So, did you... Huh? Huh? I whisper to them, he is on the way to... Pelandon to see his brother. No. <laughs> right. No. Tell him he can't, can't go. I I couldn't. Why? He's still there. <laughs> it's he's going to make him worry. Well, well, well you might make him dead if you don't tell him. <sighs> Shit. You want to be responsible for his dead? He's so cute. Oh my god. Okay, I'll go to him again. <laughs> okay. Shit. He, he, you walk back and he goes, oh, uh, yes? I am, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, you can't go to Pelendon. Why? The city is fucking destroyed. And your brother is probably, probably dead. What? How do you know that? The city is taken by a, a great... Nightmare creature. How how is that possible? It had the had the greatest warriors in in our world. He was there. How oh, how did this how did this happen? I don't know if he's dead or not. He might have escaped. Oh, you see him kind of. You, he's kind of visibly lightheaded. You know he's slouched a little bit and is holding his head um and and just just as you're having this conversation you notice towards the side uh a man a, this sort of old uh dark-skinned human man he's very skinny and has this like curly white beard and and and, and hair and he's just staring blankly at the water and you can hear him muttering something and you you see the the uh, Ariandar's uh, kind of vision instantly turn towards him, and and then he goes back to oh, I, I, my brother. I I still have to go. I have to know if he's alive. Do do we see that guy like whispering? Yeah, that like guy just I elbow Emily. Hey, Emily, you, uh, you know magic stuff, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Can you... Can, do you... That fella over there in the back. Can you... Do you... Can you tell what he's doing? Can I tell what he's doing? Roll yeah. a perception check for me. 
No, wait, were you asking G or were you asking me? I got confused. <laughs> I was asking G, but I can't. Yeah, but I, 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 I can't I, try. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 23. Um, you probably have to... He's he's talking something. He's, he, it seems like it's the same thing. It seems rhythmical. But um, you probably have to get closer. Uh, he's about, like, uh, I, I would say... 30 feet from you, so you'd be 15 feet away from Violet. You have to get closer to, to be able to um, ascertain what it, what it is that he's saying. Isn't isn't Violet near him? It is, she, she is, but he's speaking out into the water. So she doesn't see. Yeah, she doesn't. You don't. You, you don't. Okay. You just hear. Well, and he can I can I recognize what he's saying? You'd I'm have to get hearing. close. <clears throat> I hold on Emily's hand and I walk by the water. Uh, come on, sweetie. <laughs> and I just kind of walk like an old man. I got that old man walk. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and as we are like next to him. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to see the stars one more time, you know. <sighs> is it daytime? It is. The sun is a star. <laughs> I say, oh, honey, it's day, but let's pretend you only have one night to live. <laughs> okay, now we're close enough to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Violet so... is just torn between him crying, the the, the cleric, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's a cleric, cl crying and them just saying this shit. Um, uh, <laughs> you guys, as you guys are there, you hear, you hear him mutter, the weave is almost complete. The chosen, the chosen, the chosen, the chosen of you, Ithar, shall soon be free, and the minds of mortals open to the ultimate truth. The weave is almost complete. The chosen of you, the chosen, the chosen of you, Ithar, shall soon be free. The minds of does, mortals open to the ultimate truth. Does he have his eyes closed? You, you take a look, and their their eyes are completely cataract ridden. He's blind. Of course. Hmm. Well, at least he has them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's one good point. Uh, it's important. <laughs> uh. hmm. Questioning myself. If I hit this man in the head or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll just too. stand there. I'll just stand there. I'm, I'm like... Uh, well, let's... Uh... Let's go sit down. My legs are tired. And as I walk <clears throat> by, what's the dragon's name? The 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 Ariandar. Hey, Arian. <clears throat> I know this is a bad time, but that feller over there, yes, he was muttering some weird uh, things, and I don't know if your goddess can tell you some stuff too but but that feller over there was being a little weird i'm sorry this is just a little bit too much for me to i understand buddy it is a bit bit too much to me to believe me but but you look like a young handsome strong feller and you're going to make through it well thank you no, it's Gee. Vesper, my friend, Dragon, she's there. But we're not, let's not talk about this now. Well, that feller, I don't know if you know something about the Weavy. I, I can't say I'm familiar. Me neither. Uh, the Weaver is the nightmare creature. The that Weaver is the nightmare Paladin. creature that took over Paladin. And you say that man is... That man is related to it somehow? Yeah, so if you hold his arms, maybe I can just hit him in the head. <laughs> but I don't think you will talk after that. <laughs> he is... Uh, Ariandar is very confused. You see this this man? He's probably in his 50s. Um, he is... I'm in my 60s. <laughs> yeah, he is, he, is conf <laughs> he is confused. He's distraught. He is stressed. He just learned his brother probably could be dead. And he can't quite process all the information that you're throwing at him right now with Violet, like, violently telling him he can't go to <laughs> Pelindan. And then you coming here and saying, hey, that guy over there is weird. He's And Emily speaking in his head, he's kind of having a rough moment right now. Um, I look at Vesper. 
and I look, I make, like, <laughs> maybe you okay. should talk to him, you know, I kind of make a face. Violet, knowing this and knowing now that the guy is muttering shit, she's going to stand up and grab this, this guy by the throat. Oh, oh. alright. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> that is easy enough to do. So he's facing the water, so you're going to grab him by the back of the neck? <laughs> like a yeah. cat. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll say, <laughs> who the fuck are you? So... As you pull, um, as you pull him and, and grab him by the back of the neck, you see him go. <gasps> what, what, what was that? Who are you? Aren't there guards on this boat? No. Uh, okay. Who, who, nice. Who are you? Who are you? I, uh, I was, I saw, I, I could see just now. I could see, and I, I can't anymore. What could you see? What were you seeing? Who are you? What were you seeing? And I'll tell you who I am. Marianne? Daughter? Yes. <laughs> Roll deception check with disadvantage. You should have quadruple disadvantage. <laughs> but roll it with disadvantage. While this is happening, by the way, Wait. Emily, is there anything you want to do to intervene? All right. I'm holding your hand. Twelve. Twelve. Still? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you guys are a fake couple now. So it's not suspicious. My idea was not a couple. It was like she was my granddaughter, but okay. Well, now you're a couple. Modernly replaced. <laughs> um. Anyway, the the man the man goes. Oh, where's my daughter? Who are you? Okay, I don't know where your daughter is. You were muttering something about the weaver, the nightmare creature. What were you muttering? I, I don't remember. I just, I saw, a, I saw a giant, flaming blue eye, but I could see, I could see, and I can't anymore. Where is my daughter? I Where? gently just. Do you let him go? I I let him go. He, he he kind of crumples to to the ground and and you see uh, two younger gentlemen uh, human as well come come to him and say what were you doing to him nothing it's, can't you see this man is old and weak this world is been is being taken by a fucking giant nightmarish god or something. Violet! Shut, up, shut the fuck up, G, now! Violet! You're spouting nonsense right now. Please uh, back away from see. Lucius. Ah, uh, fuck you. I know. Uh, what the fuck? What do you want, G? There's like a million people on this boat. Shut Everybody up. is staring at you. <laughs> I don't care. Nobody, they might shoot us. Or you, at least. We are Velox Moors. We are fucked. <laughs> Continue shouting weaver like this. You don't know if the weaver people are around here. They might be around here. Plus, uh, you just traumatized the man and now you're traumatized another. I don't, no wonder you were married to a woman. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through some, some shit she... in my life. I don't fucking care. <laughs> She goes over to Violet, puts a hand on her shoulder, is like, perhaps we should go sit back down now. <laughs> Roll animal handling. <laughs> oh. Not that, Violet. <laughs> <laughs> Violet just goes sit down and she's she's shaking. Let's first sit down next to her. <laughs> we're, we're like from where they were sitting and where she was talking to the man, would she have been able to hear like the conversation about the medallion or anything? Uh, about the medallion, no, but you would have heard the screaming just now. Right. Okay. Everybody did. <laughs> what was the name of the, the dragon again? I forgot. Ariandar. A-R-I-A-N. Before we go, Ariandar, uh, if you want to like sit with us. I don't think I should sit with you. Well, now. That's a little hurtful. That is not because of you, G. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's because of Violet. And he kind of, he just gives you a look, and you, you see him kind of ner being nervous. I wink at him. 
women, right? <laughs> and I just walk away. I pull Emily with me. Are people still looking at us? Yeah. So I let go G, and mm. I just pick up my loot, and I start trying to, you know, <laughs> let, make the mood a little bit happier, right. and they start playing. Roll performance check for me, please. With disadvantage. <laughs> disadvantage. 16. All right. As you, as you start playing, a few of them kind of lose interest in what's happening. Um, some of them pay attention to you, but there's still a big chunk of people that are kind of staring at you. Um, particularly from the edges of the boat, uh, you notice... Um, a, a, a female tiefling, a dark gray skin. Um, it, it kind of it's kind of similar to the the top of a great white shark, uh, and she's staring at you with like glassy eyes. They're they're not you know cataract or or blind eyes. You, they're just very glassy and and kind of almost like fish eyes. Um, her horns kind of uh, curve backward and almost tie into each other to form into one. Um, and she's kind of looking at you, leaning against the the the, the, the edge of the boat. Uh, you also notice an elven woman um, with with kind of short uh, black hair, kept kept in a, a, a tight ponytail, and then you know having two little strands uh, that that go down to, to to kind of to to her jaw. She's wearing these black robes, and uh, she's she gives you a look before turning back into the staring down at the water as you guys continue. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, uh, Vesper. Yes, G. Do, dra do, do, do dragons lay eggs? Or? Well, I cannot speak for dragons, but lizards do. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Why are you so curious about this? I've never been with a dragon. We can talk about it later. <laughs> Does it stretch? Okay. <laughs> Damn <That's> you! About... <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just sit down. I eventually just fall asleep, sitting down. I'm tired. Or Ask her. She calmed down. <laughs> no, she's still a little bit. Not not shaking uh, physically, but shaken mentally, I guess. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> trying to look at, like, really kind of study her, like, watching her. I was like, did something happen over there? <laughs> the, the, the guy was, with no eyes, muttering something about the weaver, as G said. If, if he's here... He, is he watching over us? I do not believe he could be physically here, but there is a potential that he is watching us. Can but he... we should probably not be making scenes like that. <laughs> I don't fucking care. I want to kill this creature. I understand you want to protect Ketri. <laughs> don't but... look at me like that, DM. <laughs> Violet doesn't know what she's messing with. <laughs> I'm just impressed. <laughs> but being reckless will cost us. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I should I should calm down, but anything that involves my daughter, I just I need to go deep in this matter. And understand. Anything that appears that is something to do with this, it just I I need I need answers. I need I need I need something. I need I need clues. I need to know what to do. Did uh, did Violet ever tell us about her dream? No, right? The nightmare? Uh, no, no, no. So how does Vesper know that it's about your daughter and you do want to protect her? Yeah. Cuz she's, she's talked outside. She, she's she's talked mentioned outside the, the, the daughter end, part yeah. before, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She has not talked oh, to the group, okay. but she talked to Vesper outside of the, yeah. the tavern. Well, she okay. was passed out in the tavern. Okay. Yeah. Accurate that I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I Vesper knows about the medallion, right? Because we've seen it. We've seen it. Uh, all of you have seen it. By Wiley. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All of you have seen like, it. I, she'll gesture vaguely. He's like, well, I believe you've received one part of your answer already. I think now we just need to keep our eyes peeled for part two. Yeah, I believe you're right. I'll try to calm down next time. <laughs> I can't promise, but I'll try. I understand. But before you get violent, maybe call me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> violent, violent. <laughs> before you get violent. <laughs> violent. Um, so... You guys all rest up uh, in this in, in this day while Emily desperately tries to distract everyone <laughs> um, with her songs, and you know to an extent she can. Um, especially the the animals uh, seem to have taken an interest in this. Uh, there are <laughs> other Gergafil, and um, there are also some some horses and even like a cow uh, that uh, seems to have taken kind of interest in the song and and are just staring at Emily as, as she is playing. Um, but anyway, I guess that will conclude the this, this section of traveling through the Ash Caldera, uh, through the lake, uh, unless you guys want to do anything else on the other two days. Do we want to cost any more old men? I think we better not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny, because I, I, I never envisioned any of this happening. It's just been a journey. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so it's fun for me too because I had not envisioned Emily screaming hello into into someone's ears, <laughs> and G suddenly taking an interest in being Tinder for Violet. Um, Listen, I was <laughs> I've been there. It's just the I'm interested in dragons. <laughs> All right. So you guys eventually finish your trip through the Ash Caldera. At night, uh, the the lake reflects the skies perfectly, and it's kind of it has this mesmerizing mirror effect as the the, the rock rises above the lake. Um, but you finally arrive at the other edge. Um, you see a gentleman uh, touch the edge of the boat just as it um, begins to dock, and the boat stops as everybody begins to leave, uh, and you guys do too. You travel. You arrive in the morning and you travel another half day. Um, you travel another half day down uh, the slope and in the direction of Soguk. And you you can see that it's it's all or actually feel that it's already colder. Like it's 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 getting real actually chilly um, as, as the winter temperatures of um, of the south of Ipsa begin uh, finally settling in. <clears throat> One moment. And finally, after that half day, crawling up elevated terrain, uh, cradled uh, by two tall masses of earth that move into the sea, there's a wave of black and blue. The black stone used to build the homes of the people of this good city. The city of Soguk is embedded with dark blue veins that marble up the walls in random patterns, making for a mesmerizing sight at a distance, almost kind of glowing with the sunlight. At the very top of this slope, you see a thick building resembling an enormous lighthouse. It is made of that same dark stone that most of Soguk is built with, but the blue patterns perfectly swirl around it and its golden balconies that reflect a bit of the, of the sunlight at this point. At the top of the dome that makes up the roof, there's another small, smaller structure that is popping out, which serves indeed as a guiding light for those traversing the waters of the fjord. This is the port city. This is Soguk, and you, uh, uh, amongst the snowy uh, and, and dull green fjords, look at possibly 
the most beautiful vision that you have witnessed in the past um, weeks, or at least a little bit of a sense of civilization. You, as you begin approaching, you see the walls, which are nothing like uh, Vulcan's spiky, bony, and metallic menace. They're, in fact, quite simple. And, and, and small, 25-foot-tall, uh, dark gray stone walls. The gates to the city are open, and there are people walking in and out. Um, and you will, can already smell brine and the sea as you begin approaching. So, what do you guys do? Okay. Uh, first of all, what day is it today? So, this would be actually the 24th. This is right because this is uh half day after you guys completed the three days, so you guys finished in the 21st. So, this would be 20 okay, 22nd. Took the boat, which would last what, three was days. Was it on the 22nd? Yeah, I wrote it down. Okay, then there you go. Then it's uh one more day. <laughs> so, this is uh Fortune's Oasis. No, this is so good. Fortune's Oasis is in Oaza, which is in another continent. Which is where we're heading. We want to go to Oaza. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So right now, what we want is to go to Deep Jaw Port. We need to grab a boat there a ship. and go to Oaza. Another boat. Should we offload our wares? <laughs> right now, okay, we, we, we can sleep in, a, in, a, in an inn and uh, find some merchants, uh, sell what we have. Because we don't know how much is going to be the, the trip to Oaza. Mm -hmm. It's a big right. trip. Uh, and the more money we have, the better. Okay. So, good idea. Violet would know a good merchant. Yeah, you'd probably want to sell your wares in Deep Jaw Port. It's probably where you can get the oh, better the, the, the better deal. No, I mean, there's merchants um, at the entrance of 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 Soguk, if you guys want to, to walk in because you guys are still kind of outside there there are merchants there but uh you would probably sell them for more on the other side of the city uh because the city is kind of built on this elevated terrain right and it kind of rises up and then goes down into the port and to the sides has the fjords uh, protecting it um and on the other side, where the port is, you would probably, you know, people would probably pay premium price because they can then sell to someone on a ship to then trade it into the world. Okay, and how much time would it take to go to the other side? Uh, about, I would say, if, you, if you're fast enough, it would probably take you like an hour. Okay, and the Barracuda is, is there? Is on or the other side? A little bit well? more. Um, so, uh, the, the Barracuda... <laughs> is on uh give me a moment the barracuda is actually on this side of the city okay i don't believe we need to rest we can go straight to the port right oh, because we've been sleeping it's... on the boat yeah we've been sleeping and it's right now it's midday a little bit over yeah <clears throat> okay we go we go straight to the port then all right so first of all you guys walk through the gates, you see the guards there, they're wearing the, the black and blue cloaks. It's, it's just full black with like these uh, wisps of blue around uh, of the guard here in, in Soguk. Um, they're keeping kind of a loose watch on everyone, but as soon as you enter, uh, and you enter with your Gurgafil, the first sense you get is that it's pretty tight in here. Uh, it's crowded. And, and right above uh, this, this sort of open section at, at, at the, 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 the beginning of the city, you see narrow streets moving up the slope, filled with merchants and people trying to sell you kind of the everything. Um, you guys, I would assume, leave your Gurgafil at a stable uh, so that at least they can be fed. Um, or sell them. <laughs> oh, you want to sell them? I mean, what about when we get back to the other continent? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the thing is, we also still have you, a while to travel from. Once we get Waza. on the other side, yeah. Once we get after this boat travel, how are we gonna walk around? We don't know, right? We might need, yes. might need them. Okay, okay. Let's. No, we can kill them for food. Them. All right. How much uh, gold are you leaving at the stable? How much time do you want? Do you want them to spend there? Aren't we uh, taking them with us? 
uh, yeah, but if they're gonna stay at a stable, they can't cross the narrow streets of, of the city. So you have to leave them at the stable and then come back for them. How uh, much is for two hours? <laughs> uh, for two hours? That would probably be like a two silver. Oh, it's... Wait, yeah. wait, but the port is on the other side, so they, they would have to go to the other side. Yeah, but not right now in peak hour where everyone is around in the streets. <laughs> They could just run over people, it's fine. <laughs> this city is not pet friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely at uh, the circumstances, it's not. I'll give you one star on Yelp. Okay, I'll 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 talk to the to the stableman mm -hmm. yes. and say uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, good afternoon. If I perchance <laughs> Okay. If I give you let's say Five gold. Hmm. Will you? I'll do anything be... for five gold. <laughs> Good. Uh... Anything you say. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, will you bring our? Uh, what's the name of the creature? Gurgafil. Will you bring our Gurgafil to the port in about two hours? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Good. I'll give him five gold. He grabs it, pockets it, happy. <laughs> I could I take them for five gold. Um, it's just tough for us to do the, the go back and forth. You could pay me, I think. You just see him <laughs> you see him just as you as you guys are are actually no, you wouldn't see this. Never mind. You would not see it. Um, <laughs> He's going to take the five gold and the Gurga feel and is going away with everything. Um by any chance they're Anyone that came off from the boat, like keeping an eye on us or looking at us. Roll perception check. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a uh, six. You don't spot anyone. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of people moving about. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. Okay. To the let's go. All right. So uh, you cross the streets, uh, climb up uh, the, the slope. Uh, this zone here, you guys would, or Violet would know, is called the Descent, actually. Um, and you, you go up the descent, you push away bracelets, clothes, jewelry, and a taxidermied fish uh, that kind of gets shoved in your face. Um, and eventually you reach a kind of a nicer area, a sense of space. Um, definitely more guards patrolling uh, these neighborhoods here at the top of the incline. Uh, about this would be about half an hour uh, of, of you guys moving through. Uh, there are the domed roofs of the city are now gold plated in in this region, and there are mansions and gardens and silver plated fenced gates. Um, but you finally, as you are at the top of this neighborhood, the shoal, you finally look down and you see the sea. You see the the the, the inlet. Uh, here, this this stretch of sea that goes inside the, the fjord, uh, and then eventually, uh, many miles ahead, um, washes out into the ocean. Uh, and you go down, you move on down to to Deep Jaw Port, and as you as you're moving down, the, the neighbor kind of completely changes. Uh, people here are are, are 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 kind of more relaxed, uh, and you start feeling this. The, the odd scent of fish, stench actually, very strongly here in this in, in this area. Every building has fishing nets, harpoons, bits of sails, and other seafaring motifs. The people walking about are kind of like barefoot, shirtless, wearing very loose clothing, uh, even though it's cold out right now. But the day is sunny, and so they're they're enjoying it. The the closer you get to the port, the more intense the smell is, and, and the more it's mixed with the, with salty water. But as you cut through one of the streets that leads you to the port, you notice a barricade, crudely made of crates and barrels, and two guards wearing the cloak of um, of the the soga guard are standing in front of it and pushing two gentlemen away, denying them passage. What do you do? Can we hear them talking? Roll perception check. Perception. A 
head. <laughs> um, you'd have to get a little bit closer, but easy enough to do. You um, you begin hearing uh, them say, uh, "I am sorry, gentlemen, but you cannot pass. The port is quarantined." And he he goes, "But I've traveled all the way from Vulcan to be here, and I can't get to the port now." Uh, I am sorry by the order of the Krakoyu Okeanus and of the Derinzia Parliament, the port is quarantined. And the other guy gets really pissed. You see this uh, <laughs> human gentleman just spinning at the, the, the feet of the guard and moving in the opposite direction. So that's the way we have to go, right? Or Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to approach a guard. Uh, you... Why is it quarantine? Uh, the port is quarantined in order, uh, or by the order of the Derincia Parliament and the Kralkoyo Okeanus, and this is all that we have been given. For how many days? We do not know until the situation is resolved. <sighs> to whom can I speak to, to know something more? You can go to the Mavi Conclave building and speak to the people directly at the parliament, if that would be your wish. I'll try to friend him. <laughs> you want to cast friends? Okay. So, you cast friends, what do you ask? <clears throat> kind sir. And I try to put a, a hand on, mm -hmm. <laughs> on his shoulder. Please, it's been a long day, and I'm so tired. I just put, I, I, I put my, my hair back. Can you please tell me? Please tell me. Roll a persuasion check with advantage. How, how many days we need to wait? There are two humans, right? Uh, one of them's a tiefling, one of them is uh, a dragonborn. Uh, you said persuasion? With advantage, yeah. Uh, 21. You're about to make out with this guy. Um, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> so, the tiefling, the tiefling goes, uh, you, you see him, this kind of light blue skin and, and the very dark eyes uh, with horns that kind of just pop off to the side. Uh, and, and he goes... I am afraid that this is indefinite. It is until the situation is resolved. And what situation are we talking about here? There has been a sickness that has been unleashed in the port. Oh, you are so kind. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> is there anything else up. you want to tell them? I walk up to them. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. No, I, I'm just I'm I'm gone because uh, it's, it's, it's the, as soon as the, the the spell is gone, he's going to know. So I'm gone. Are you still I moving? Woke <laughs> I woke up to him. Yeah. Oh, good, 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 good evening. Uh, I'm from the uh, I'm from the infestation team, and uh, I was told that uh, I was supposed to meet here with the rest of the, the mighty team. To uh, c c c clean up the docks and uh, investigate further on the thing. <laughs> I can't even give you a check for that, dude. Because of what You're just so happened. good. <laughs> because of what just happened, I can't. Uh, you see him go. <laughs> what? What was that? And he, he looks at he looks at his friend, and, and his friend goes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You just told her everything you knew. <laughs> and he goes, oh, uh, you, There is no infestation, team. I am tired of having to deal with this. Please move away. <laughs> and he, 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 he see him hold his head from being influenced. I open up my cloaks to show my chest. <laughs> oh, my God. And he's not looking at you. Okay, cool. I walk past them. <laughs> they block you with their with their weapons, okay. and it's uh, the very good. Is still pretty, the, the very good. I walk is still away. Tall. All right. I walk away. Then I look back at him. I was lying. This was a test. <laughs> <laughs> they, good job. They, and they, I walk away. Okay, they they look at you kind of weirdly, but 
they don't do anything else. Okay, it so seems <laughs> it seems like a lot of people have been getting in here, and you see more people walking down. But just as you guys are um, walking off, um, just as you guys are walking off from this situation, you see a gentleman approach you. If I could get Mick to please turn on his camera and join us here. There is, there he is. Wait, cameras are looking weird now, but they'll look great in a sec, in a second. There we go. So, welcome in, Mick. Hello. Welcome in. Um, you were resting by the street, trying to see if you'd listen to a little bit more of what the guards were saying. Um, and you hop off of, of kind of the the street that was crossing with this one that they were moving to um, as they are exiting. And you very clearly saw something happen when Violet talked to that other guy uh, and noticed perhaps the presence of magic. And they are just yeah. passing by you right now. What do you uh, do? So wait, I'm, I'm outside the, the city. No, you're no, in the street. Inside. You're in the street yeah. where they are passing by right now, inside the city. Okay, right. Um, so okay, I will. Um, I will approach them, <coughs> and I will say, uh, "Who's uh, who's leading the group?" Violet was Violet the first one leaving. Yeah, Violet. And I, I go up to Violet and I say, "Excuse me, may I have your attention, please?" Who are you? Real slim shady, please step <laughs> <laughs> And now, Mick, I would like to ask you to describe your character and tell us what they are looking at. So this figure that approaches you is um, this uh, blue dragonborn that is clad in, uh, in an iron armor. He has a cape, a shield on his back, and he's also, uh, I guess his, like his, his staff, his trident can be like in the back, resting. Uh, he has like this uh, this uh, staff that looks like a trident. Um, a harpoon. Yeah, a harpoon. Sorry, exactly. Yeah. My bad. I was confusing the two. Yeah. All good. Um, yeah, and I uh, I approach them. I'm like a, I should be. Am I like the tallest in the group? You or? are the tallest out yeah. of all of them. Yeah. I'm the tallest in the group. This like big. Uh, Who are you? Physique. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I look up and go. May I ask what is what was happening back there with the guards? I but, Okay, first of all, who the fuck are you? <laughs> I am Hajdrol, a messenger of the god of the seas. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh well, I was just asking what what the fuck is going on with the with the port, because we need to go to Oaza, and they're not letting us, and I don't know, it's an infestation or whatever. I understand. Also, Anin, for context, have I yeah. been in the city before, or have I not yeah. entered yet? Yeah, you've I have, been here. I have you've, access to it. You have exactly. been here for, um, uh, I, I believe, uh, I would say more than a month. Give me give me yes. um, um, a moment, actually, to... to um, Make, make to confirm that and also to do something else uh but yeah you've been um you've been here for almost a month uh you yes. had been on your journey in search of divine inspiration and and roughly two and a half weeks ago um indeed sailors and 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 divers started to um contract a strange disease you have not yes. seen it you have not seen anything um but yeah this is this is what you know um that you've been here for a long time, and then suddenly the port had to be quarantined. Okay, okay, right. So um, I uh, I squint a little bit at uh, at Violet, and I look at the group, and I ask, "What would be your business in this in this town?" Why do you want to know? Because I see some potential within you. I feel that this might have not been a coincidence. I like the way you talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's starting to be into Dragonborn now. <laughs> what 
Do you what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 What business do you want with us? I believe uh, there might be an unsolved situation in this city that perhaps we can help resolve in some way. <coughs> and what do you have to offer? I mean... <laughs> Wait, I don't say I mean. Um... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Have you seen me? I'm the tallest <laughs> one. Uh, uh, while this is happening, I yeah. cast message. Uh, okay. Uh, oh my do God. I and I go, hi, yeah, uh, she wants money. <laughs> you hear that in your head, Hazrael. Wants money. Wait, um, what? no, not that I, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I hear her too, right? She's right by the side. No, she can no, whisper. No, no, no. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, do I have a lot of money on me even? I don't, I'm not even sure. Uh, you do uh, not. In fact, uh, Hazrael, yeah. since you were in pilgrimage, you are almost destitute. Uh, you yes. would have a total of 25 gold on you tops. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty broke. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so, uh, you asked me what I have to offer. And I, I say, maybe I can get you into the city. Is that not what you desire? Or into the port? We're the port, the yes, city. exactly. Okay. Sorry. Do you know how to get into the port? If you prove yourselves useful, perhaps we can find a way. Where there is a will. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I like you this just guy. Auto complete it. <laughs> Violet is confused a little bit. <laughs> um, I'll just stay here. I'll go talk to Velox Morse. Uh, you turned around. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really next to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were they were hearing right. Yeah. They were hearing this. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think? Huh? Yes. Well, if it's your time. Oh. He did say I he look was visibly confused. A G. <laughs> Why would we be useful to him? He's the minority. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I don't fucking know. That's not very progressive. <laughs> no, it's minority as in is one. We're four. <laughs> Why? 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 What are we helping him with, precisely? I don't know, but he can get us to the port, so it's what we want. Well, what if he wants us to, you know, do uh, some uh, illegal activities? I turn to Azral. And what do you want us to do? Yeah, what do you want us to do? <laughs> I believe that not be of my... Uh, okay, how do I say this in English? Wait. Um, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Focusing, I believe that not by that not be my job to say. There might be a higher will at stake. Who are we talking about? Why, of course, the the gods, Dalgar, oh, the god of the tide. He's crazy <laughs> like you, Violet. <laughs> this is going swimmingly. Here's voice. Pun intended. <laughs> I bet he heard voices telling him you wanted money. Okay, you Ask have something him. to do with the gods. Did you Show hear us. voices saying she wanted money? <laughs> Show us. I'm Show so us the voice. Wait, I'm so con fucking confused right now. I'm, I'm, ignore I'm G. <laughs> what is going on? Ignore, ignore the little guy. <laughs> poor, poor little dude. <laughs> okay, so wait, what did you say, Violet? If you have something to do with the gods, show us. Uh. I, I take out my my uh, my staff and I show it to her. This right here is enough proof. Tempest Judgment, a weapon blessed by the god itself. It's a fucking rusty harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> How does that prove uh, anything? I started, I started feeling a little bit annoyed at the constant persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want 
You want her, our uh, services. I need to know who you are. Who do you from? No, wait. Who do you serve? Who do, who do you serve? <laughs> My and why us? And why like this? And if you are trustworthy. My child, I have already answered most of your questions that you are asking right now. How the I fuck do I know you're not lying? <laughs> I answer to the god, Dalgar, god of the tides. And I am in pilgrimage, seeking divine message from him and following his guiding. I put my finger in the air as I want to make a question. <laughs> I, I slowly look to G. Or to the gnome. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you want us to help? Yes. But you don't know me what. <laughs> that would be most appreciated. Okay, you see the problem. Okay, I'm gonna intervene. So <laughs> I'm gonna intervene here. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help you out. So you know that you have been here, and suddenly this disease has been spreading, and you know that people have been dying from it. You have not seen what the disease is exactly, but you have heard around that people have been dying for it. And obviously, he, you, as a cleric of Dalgar, aspect of the tides and god of the sea, you can't you can't let that stand, right? It would not yes. be right for people to be dying here. And so, as you see these folk here approaching you, I mean, they you see a gnome, you don't know their name yet, but you see a gnome with a mechanical arm, a lizard, a walking pink lizard with a staff, a woman... I don't know how uncommon that might be, but yes, <laughs> yeah. okay, no. Uh, but you see... You see <laughs> no, I see. I, I'm gonna tell you, you've never seen a gnome with a metal arm in your entire life before, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, right. He's probably the only one out there right now. Um, and you see, uh, you know, Violet with, with these strange bracers that have kind of lightning marks on them. Um, and, I mean, the girl with the loot in the back just spoke in your mind. These guys might be what you're looking for to help the people of Soga count. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be more direct then in my approach. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you might be of great help for this city. This city is a great pantheon to our god, and we cannot let it rot away like this. Sure, I'm, I'm from this city, but right now, what I really, really want is to get into that port, take a boat, and go to Oaza. Yeah, can we, can we, can, we can really stick around. We have to uh, keep moving on. Well, I guess what lies ahead, only one way to, do, to find out. <laughs> If you have something in mind, we can help you quickly, and off we go. And Especially you will help us. <laughs> if you can get us access to that boat. Hmm, you say you need a boat, that is. I believe that might be my area of expertise. Let's call this a uh, beneficious agreement between us. Okay, Captain Hasdral, he has a boat. Wait, nice do I, have a, I mean, yeah, I should have a you boat. Don't, you do not have a boat. You, have, you <laughs> came in a boat, I, but you do not have a boat. Okay, you do not have a ship. Know. It's a ship, by the way, guys. A ship. Okay. I know how to control a ship. I do okay. not have one. But nice to I meet you, Captain Hasdrow. And I just put my hand down. I slowly look at his hand and I look a bit confused. Reach out my hand, which is probably triple the size of his hand, and I shake. And I hold Grab his entire finger. hand within my my own, and I shake, I shake it. it. I'm Please. G, leader of Vox Morse. Pleased to meet you. May God bless. No, not God. <laughs> May Dalgar bless you. <laughs> I'm getting too much God Godlike now. I'm becoming too much a child of God. I believe more in science than evolution, but sure. What the fuck is evolution? Science? Yeah, I'm, I have a robot arm. Holy. What is wrong with you today, people? Science than evolution. How does that make sense? <laughs> Alright. Um, she's Vasper, I... single, uh, Violet, <laughs> and Emma. We are Vox Morse. Jesus, were you, you going to say Vox Machina, dude? 
Vox Morse. <laughs> Volkswagen. You're, you're Velox Morse. Velox Morse, I know. Oh, Vox. It's a Vox oh, Morse. My oh, God. Punch someone today. Okay. I'm Vox the leader. Vox Morse. I'm pleased to meet you all. Do you have anything in mind that we can do right now to help you? Well, I, I feel that we should try to help this city. Um, I have some healing powers that perhaps might be useful. That would come in handy. I don't know anything about magic or how you're going to treat the disease, but do your thing, we help you, and get us a fucking boat. Ship. Ship. <laughs> right. Where do we go? So, let me intervene once again. How's Drow? Has no if, fucking idea. If you if you knew where to go, you would have tried to solve this on your own. Yeah. The thing is, there's a lack of information. Help. Yeah. Yeah. And we were told to go to, to... the parliament. In parliament. If you wanted, if you wanted to know more information, that then Violet ended up getting anyway. Does Hasdrell know where the parliament is or Violet? Yeah, I should know. Yeah, both of you would know that it is in the shoals and that that big building that looks like um, um, uh, a, a little uh, kind of like giant cylinder in the top of of the city. That's the, the Mavi Conclave. Yeah. And um, we're from the guild, right? We got the guild medallions. You're not from the or guild. Not. Not. The guild is dead. This is Violet the, said Violet said from, the, from the guild. You, she, yeah, guild that looks more. We are we can be a guild. Our own guild. Like a guild can be a name and a thing. Man. Yeah, we are a thing. Guild. We're just a group. Yeah, it's a, the guild. We're a gang. So, we're just a, we're you gang killed sure. onion now. <laughs> I I just don't I No, I, am... I said they are from my guild. Yeah. Sure. Not but that doesn't guild. matter. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. You're not from the guild, no. The guild is... Okay, so yeah. we have no power to walk into the parliament, though. Um... And it's probably a lot of people, and we already know what they are, were going to tell us. It's an infestation, people are dying from the disease. Yeah, but we can offer to help them. If it's something... I mean, he can. he's from the waters, so if the disease is coming from the water, he can probably commune with it. But and if it's like... He has healing powers. Yeah, if it's, if it's creatures... So he can cleanse a disease, right? We just um, have to know what's the maybe. source. <laughs> Do yeah, we, does yeah, Violet might. know of any kind of hospital tent or anything? Uh, to there is, cure? there is um, the uh, sanctum for the ill and inf infirmed here, ailed and infirmed here in uh, Sogok. In that, uh, in that sanctum, it's where people are usually treated. Um, okay. This uh, place is completely. Um, uh, uh, it, at this moment, it is sealed to the public because okay. of the disease. Um, I'm just saying this because Hajdral would know that because that would be the first place he would have gone <laughs> to, to look, to search, to, to help. Um, it's currently sealed and nobody gets in unless they have permission. Hajdral, do you know what disease are we talking about here? I would you know not the know, name? right? No. Unfortunately... I have no idea. Didn't you ask? <laughs> you did, they did not say. <laughs> okay. We need to talk well, to we the could king. ask the people around to bend around what they know. <laughs> like, because I mean, there's other fishermen and people working around the docks, right? Yeah, the thing is, I've been in the, in the, in that place for like a month. Do I not know anything about it? Uh, no, you, you've been here for a month. The, the, the port has been quarantined for two and a half weeks. Um, it's you. The only thing that you know from what you've you've been doing here is that the port has been quarantined and people are diseased. This is what you've heard around, uh, in, okay. in inns and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but there are other places where one might acquire information if one would only be willing to pull on old strings. Hmm. Oh mm. shit! Okay. Uh, we gotta go to the barracuda. Uh, I can. Well, not the barracuda. I can. Okay. Follow me if you want to live. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a guy with five yes. gold in our horses. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
<laughs> shut him by the port. <laughs> okay, not, you can't find... get in the port. Well, we, we are outside the port. But... Yeah, you guys are all outside the port. You're not even close to the port. The, the streets are sealed. That's why I was saying it. What he was going to say was, oh, wait, but the port is closed. But then I just thought, no, but he just got five gold. Why would he say that? Um, <laughs> so he kept the five gold. We gotta gold. beat him up to get our gold back. Oh, fuck that. Um... <laughs> Is the streets where Violet grew up in uh, far away? Is it? Um, okay, so I'm confused here. And I don't know if I'm confused because you're confused. <laughs> Probably because I'm confused. But Violet grew up in Vulcan. She was here yeah, working right. and then came she back to okay. Vulcan. What is, what's Let's happening go to today? Barracuda. Did, did, did nobody read <laughs> anything today? What's happening? <laughs> I, I'm just... I know any tinkerer any anyone uh, you would only know the, sh the shipwrights and those would be at the port Th that well, would be the yeah. closest connection to a tinker that you would have you would have found but they can't be at the port they cannot be at the port no they would be at their own Did places they but... evacuate people from the port or are they just like trapped all there in that area that you don't know <laughs> okay <laughs> i think we should go talk to an innkeeper they know everything <laughs> let's go to the Barracuda. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, okay, let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll talk later. All right, you guys are going to move to the Barracuda. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you uh, climb up the street again, and now we're back pretty much, or like, <laughs> I would say 45 minutes back the, the opposite way with Hajdral <laughs> this time following you. Um, until you reach the door of uh, the Black Barracuda. So, um... Wait, give me one second. Why can't I find the thing? Uh, the descent, there we go. Hmm. So, uh, you move towards the eastern side of the descent, uh, and the buildings start to, and the streets start to get, you know, the streets start to get narrower, the buildings start to get shadier a little bit, uh, but you find this L-shaped uh, black building with a wooden board uh, with a black barracuda fish painted on it. Uh, the teeth are kind of highlighted in gold, um, as are a few of the scales. Do you guys walk in? Yeah. Yep. You walk inside, and the, the entire walls are painted black, with gold and highlights on the corners, and where they meet the ceiling. White, almost bleached skeletons of fish are on the walls, from barracudas to shark mouths and other strange-shaped skulls that stand out. There is an ebony wood counter with kind of gold leaf adornments in the front and, and, and shelves with bottles of darkened liquor covered in dust uh, as if they had been taken from the deck of a dirty ship. When you first enter, there's like a small corridor that then expands into the rest of the space and on the wall to the far left, the eyes and teeth of a barracuda are painted in slightly glowing paint, immediately facing whoever walks inside and turns. Um, the clientele here... Uh, is kind of rough and tumble. You see uh, sailors or, you know, people wearing sailor sailor clothes. You see um, burly, kind of drunk men already. Um, people with probably scurvy. And at the bar, there is an orcish gentleman, um, tall with big tusks uh, and the slick back hair, uh, wearing a leather vest and kind of polishing a glass. What do you guys do? I'll wait for us to settle in and sit down. Yeah. And uh, look for my old boss. She is not here. You would have to say something to the bartender. <laughs> I remember. You do, because I gave you the notes with what you, you would have to say. <laughs> Wait, where did I put that? Uh, uh -oh. Do we see someone playing? No, no bard here, Emily. <laughs> Unless, obviously, Might you want to. a big shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm like sitting down and I just start like playing some notes. What kind of notes are you playing? Are you going for a more somber tune or are you going for something a little yeah. bit more? Yeah, something calm. I'm still very right. stressed from almost dying, but also weirdly <laughs> inspired. And happy it happened, so... <laughs> yeah. Alright, you begin You begin playing. People kind of give you a look, but then they they go back to their drinking. The, the bartender seems to be the one that is kind of 
um, fixated on on your group, and you seem particularly look at Violet. <clears throat> I approached the bartender. <laughs> All right. <laughs> who who was looking at me? Sorry. The bartender. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I approached you. <laughs> And I approach him, and I say, I smell blood in the water. And he says, And we welcome the slaughter. Walk in, Violet. Thank you, and good to see you again. Do you um, bring your friends with you? Or do you go along? No. You go along. All right, so you... If she would behave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> you see you see Violet go off into a back room um, as he opens the door to the kitchen. Violet, you climb uh, or you walk into the, the kitchen, you turn right into and climb these stairs that lead to a single door. And just as you open the door and you look to the left where she always was uh, back in the day, you see none other than Callisto Thalassos, your... Uh, boss, a female tiefling, or former boss, a female tiefling with um, dark blue skin, uh, lighter on, on kind of the contours of her cheek, bioluminescent freckles under her kind of blood red eyes, and a scar on her lip. She has long horns that point forward, um, and, and long black hair with um, multiple gray strands. And she wears a black uh, hooded long coat over a, a brown leather vest and a gray shirt. And so. she, she, as you walk in, she's <coughs> talking in the middle of, a, she's in the middle of a conversation with someone else, an, another tiefling individual. <coughs> and immediately her, her eyes turn to you and she goes, Violet, I did not expect to see you here today. Or any My day. dear boss. Not your boss anymore, and you're no longer you no longer work for me, so I don't know where that <clears> is coming <throat> from. What do you want? I know, I know, we ended up <clears throat> in a bad way. But I need your help. One last time. Why would I help you? I have gold. I have skills, whatever you need. Violet, you know that I do not care about gold, and you most certainly would know that although your skills would be welcome, I have found proper replacements. I have some other stuff. <laughs> Please, I am all ears. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I have a job now. I don't really need anything from you. I just want to know. <laughs> I guess friends on her. <laughs> Do you want to cast friends on Callisto? Yeah. On Callisto uh, Falasio? Falassos. Falassos? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's your. You do it on purpose. <laughs> no, I don't. Thalassos is is associated Thalassio. with the ocean, dude. I'm tr I'm doing my best here, okay? Um, <laughs> I bet your Thalassos are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> man. God damn it, friends. Guys. <laughs> friends. All right, you want to cast friends on Callisto? Um, go ahead, and what do you tell her? <clears throat> we were more than boss and. I didn't like that smile. <laughs> <laughs> Boss and employee. We were friends as well. I really, really need your help now. I need to go to know what's going on in the city, the disease. I, I, won't, I won't be here long. I, I, I need to go to Oaza, so... Now that you are laying the cards on the table properly, then I will lay mine as well. There is no need to lie for no reason, Violet, especially when we had such a good relationship. But no magic. 
Nothing. Here, please. We are way past that, and I don't want my employees to suffer from your stupid mistakes, and I would not want you to suffer from your stupid mistakes either. But do not do that again. This has been the last warning. It just, so hap it just so happens that I actually do need your help. You might have noticed then that the port is quarantined. Well, yeah. Well, that is not good for business. Not at all good for business. There have been many attempts to figure out what is happening there. But sadly, my agents have not really returned. They were never and will never be quite as good as you are. Understandable. Well, I do not know much, but I know that this outbreak, this disease, it began in the Dalgig's den, or at least it was divers that first got this disease, and that is the place they frequent the most. Hmm. Well, I shall go take a look. I would not recommend doing so right now. Perhaps using the cover of the night to get inside the port is a better idea. Okay. It's... Um, well... It appears that uh, <laughs> we made a fair friend. And um, he kind of knows, or has, I don't fucking know, he has a ship, and without a ship, we don't go anywhere. And he wants to cure the disease of the city, so... Who is this friend of yours? Hasdral, do you know? I do, I have heard of the oaf blue dragonborn that has been walking around my city, asking questions, praying... He has no ship. I don't know. He said he could get us a ship to go to Oaza if we helped him cure the city. Honey, if you solve my problem, I can get you a ship. Sure. It is that easy. So, as I said, begin in the dog extend. Follow whatever has happened there, and then when you have an answer as to what is going on, you can either call me, come here, or even just solve the problem. As long as the quarantine is over, I am happy. Okay. Thank you then. I'll be on my way. Good to see you, Violet. Not so good to see you. How's the baby? Goodbye. She's perfectly fine, healthy, and a woman now. I hope she stays that way. I just say nothing and go away. All right. You leave, you go down, your friends. Guys, while you guys are uh, sitting at the tavern, is there anything you guys want to talk about with each other? Since you got a new a new friend, <laughs> while Violet is uh, in there, it's like the the split time while yeah. we were waiting. Okay, I was like just I I personally I'm just vibing to uh to Emily's tunes. I'm I'm, I'm looking between Vesper and Hasdrol, trying to. I look confused, looking in between them. What is your problem, Glamps? <laughs> Hasdrel. Yes. Do your people um do do, do 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 they put eggs? I am afraid we do not. Can they mm. <laughs> See you lie to me, Vesper. When did I lie? You told me dragons put eggs. I told you that I cannot speak for Dragonborn, that I speak for the lizard folk. Can you put eggs? 
Does it Put one right now. <laughs> it's not how it works, Krebs. <laughs> how does it work? I've ne I'm... <laughs> I've never been with you. You muted. You muted, fish. <laughs> Sorry, I I threw up G and I I I go like, hey, that's not how you talk to a lady. <laughs> it's Vesper. Still a lady. She's a dragon. I am not a dragon. <laughs> I look at him I'm like, seeing a spitfire. When he says I'm she's not... a dragon, I, I look at him like... <laughs> I am a dragon Forgive too, Grimps. you know. <laughs> Forgive Have Grimps. you ever been with the dragon? Uh, I'm sorry, but... I do not lend myself to those lifestyles. Oh. Oh. I have been too busy traversing continents and oh. cities. For my life. I'm sorry I cannot help you with that it's okay. pertinent question. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> if I knew you, you swung that way, I wouldn't have put you into this weird position. We met a very handsome gentleman uh, <laughs> on the, the boat, if you're interested. Uh, his name was uh, Arwendar. Blackhorn. <laughs> what a very poor matchmaker. And he was He's single. Up. And he liked gods, too. I appreciate your offer, but I'm I only sure look do. towards Dalgar. Oh, you already love so My <laughs> Yes. But my type of love is different, you know. Esper. You scrumps. Have you ever been with a dragon? No. Grimps. What about a gnome? <laughs> Definitely not. What about a dwarf? Are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> a dragon? <laughs> I I draw starts this. to get like slightly amused. I'm sorry. <laughs> I start to get slightly amused by the conversation. Like I start cracking a smile. Do you also believe in God, Vesper? I believe. Have you never done the good stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody bring this do this gnome a beer <laughs> and shut him up? <laughs> I'm sorry. What is this good stuff? <laughs> the good about? stuff, and I just hit my hands like. <laughs> Fighting. A gentleman places a beer in front of G. Thank you. <laughs> I Pay smell beer. blood in the water, G. The, 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 the orc looks at you. No, you don't. No, I don't. You're right. I don't. You're right. I don't. And I just grab the mug and I start, start gulping down. I apologize for his behavior. It is fine. He said I was fine. See? Hmm. Oh, my God. And I, just, I will I'm also there. have a beer, please. I'm there dangling my feet. My feet don't reach the ground. I'm just there dangling my feet, drinking my mug. Like easy enough. They they give you the the ale as well for you, Hajjo. Thank thank you very much. I thought and, you were more uh, into water. Um, <laughs> what kind of question is that? I I also partake in uh in alcohol sometimes. Oh. <laughs> May, may Dolgar bless our drinks, brother. May, may him. Yes. I don't want to continue in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Find I'm someone socially else. socially bonding. <laughs> They're bonding. They're bonding. Let them. Let them. I'm bonding. Yeah, I'm just, learning about dragons. <laughs> just do a chin chin and uh, I a drink. Chin chin. <laughs> right. Um, well, Emily, Vesper, anything else you two are doing? <clears throat> I appreciate your intervention, Emily, but I'm I fear that Gramps is far beyond his yearning learning years. Yearning years. Yearn, learning years. Oh uh, who's uh who's paying for this beer? I am. You am? Okay. <laughs> hey. Is Emily still playing? Yes, I nod and I continue playing. Yeah, I turn to Emily and I say so very good tunes. Thank this, you. This uh, reminds me of an artist I heard during my my trips. This uh, Celine Dion. Have you heard of her? 
I have, yes. I have not uh, been very fortunate to hear her play, but I've heard of her magical tunes, such as uh, Will You Go On? Mm, yes. <laughs> I, I do not know the exact name of the songs, but uh, your tunes strike me very similar in a, in a good way. Don't get me wrong. I like it. Similar or better? Hmm. <laughs> this is a difficult position you have placed me in. <laughs> you can be honest. I'll just keep working and I'll be better. And I start like jamming harder and kind of like super <laughs> inspired to do better. I raise my drink. That's the spirit. May God bless your Dalgar. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <God>. like that. <laughs> May, May God. Dolgar, Dolgar. May Dolgar bless your bless your tunes. <laughs> Stop looking at me, cat. Stop judging me. <laughs> you can't see so the cat the when the cat is there. <laughs> yeah, you guys can see Mitzi's cat is just like staring right like, at was mm. staring right at the camera. <laughs> Dalgar, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> my cheeks hurt. I'm gonna uh, stop, like, I'm gonna remove the word God from my vocabulary forever. Yeah. I mean, it's not Dalgar. correct, it's yeah. still a God. It's still a God. Still a God. Yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. I don't want to say God because it's like there's only one God, but there's not only one. <laughs> if you say it's make God guide your way, like, which? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, I'm so like, yeah, fill me in. Which one do you mean, exactly? <laughs> yeah. You can say, may Have you my studied? God be with you. For example, they're gonna give me a study check on the on the gods of this of this oh, universe. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So you guys fuck around for a little bit, um, and then Violet returns and joins you at the table. Hey, God, somebody oh. saying <laughs> hi. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings. Um, I found some useful information. Uh, I talked to my old boss, um, oh. Kalisto Falacio. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for some reason, you know, she's in the Seaman bar. <laughs> and pizza said in chat. So. Oh, I got a... oh, my God. oh, no, 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 no. Um, <clears throat> she told me to. <laughs> Investigate, uh, Dalgic's den. Uh, was this what she said? Yeah. Um, she told me to investigate Dalgic's Dalgic den. She said I would find some information there. Uh, we could uh, stop the spread of the disease and everyone will be happy. Where's Dalgic's den? In the port. <clears throat> and we can go at night. That would be Where? most wise. And that's when we sleep. You won't sleep. If you want to sleep, sleep now. Okay. <laughs> you just immediately <laughs> falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Pass out. <laughs> it's one beer. That's it. It's consistent. <laughs> well. And uh, we can uh, try to sell our stuff meanwhile we, while we wait for the night. Um. <laughs> Or do that tomorrow. And we just we might wait find around. Some interesting things that it might be better to go with the lighter load. <laughs> okay, sure. Didn't we agree to sell stuff at the port? Well. True. <laughs> well, I would assume that no one's at the port, so the merchants are all outside. Mm. Or are they are are they there? No. There are stores there are stores in the rise, for example. Uh, where m items that could be used magically would be of interest. Um, I know, Magic Oceania. I read my notes, okay? It probably, she it read them now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it probably, it probably would have been... Um, uh, you probably would, would have made more money if you sold them at the port, but with the port quarantined, um, you know, even when it comes back, there's no telling when you could sell something like that. Okay, should we wait then? I mean... We wait, we see if we can fix the quarantine, and then we try to sell. We have better chances to, to have more money or to sell at a higher price at the port. 
Fair. <laughs> and we are not really uh, with a heavy load because I have my stuff in a bag of holding, so... <laughs> Fair, that's right. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not heavy. You're not wing weighed down. <laughs> yeah, with your giant, whatever claw. the bird's name is, <laughs> bird claw <laughs> or whatever. The two giant eyes. <laughs> Thank God for the bad bag of holding. Okay, yeah. I guess we wait. So yeah, we wait for the nightfall. Yeah, wait for and... nightfall. Uh, very well. So you guys uh, are you waiting here at the Barracuda? Are you gonna go elsewhere? Just so I know where to position you. No, I'll just... Well, we wait here, right? All right. Jeez wants to sleep. He's sleeping on the table, probably. <laughs> I am asleep. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. Um, so, you guys uh, stay here uh, at the, the Black Barracuda as night eventually uh, creeps into Soguk. You exit the Black Barracuda and, and you see the, the moon in the sky and just this kind of like chilly air that that is a breeze that is just flowing through the city at this hour um, there are tor there's torchlight and and um, actually heavy torchlight out in the streets and it's kind of like blocking out the the, the view of the stars um, but do you wish to head to the port is that it that's where the <clears throat> if, if there's a way to or go around or avoid guards or well, you're gonna. There's gonna be some rolling involved in that. You're gonna <laughs> probably have to, uh, you know, as you walk down the streets, you, the people are walking about. They're they're drunk, uh, and there's there's a few foreigners already uh, as well, drunk with the the locals. Um, you see as well the the blue spots, uh, stripes and veins of of the buildings kind of begin emitting this this like dull blue glow that mixes with the with the torches and the lanterns, hence blocking the the light. Uh, but you reach the first barricade, there are two guards there. Uh, you know that every street that you guys have moved on so far, every street that connects to the port is blocked and barricaded by two uh, guards, uh, some of them even, even more. And there are guards patrolling um, those streets as well, up and down. So however you want to suggest moving past them, that is up to you guys. DM, I have dark vision. <laughs> Good to know. I can see in the dark. Okay. There's torchlight. How far Everyone apart can... are the streets? -ish? Um, like the so, barricades? So the barricades would be, I would say, about 40 feet apart from each other. Like the buildings uh, down at the rise are slightly wider. Uh, so there would be, you know, some of them would be 40 feet, others would be like 50, 60 feet uh, apart from each other. I'll, I'll turn to the group and say, are you guys good with not making noise? Mm. Immediately look at Gramps. <laughs> like the look. And wh while you look, you also hear the clink, clank, clink, clank of uh, Azrael's <laughs> armor. Yeah, I'm very... <laughs> Shit. I think that would be a no, Violet. <laughs> I uh, could uh, always uh, cast a minor illusion if needed. You can cast a minor illusion. Um, Emily, do you want to grab attention or something can, with your I, instruments? I, I can do that, yes. It's me, me and Astro, we, uh, we're a little noisy with our metals, but so maybe we could distract the guards as a band. <laughs> and then the, the two of you go in. Sneak in. Sure. I... I can also uh, deafen them with a spell. I can blind them with my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you deafen more than one? Uh, it would be just one, but I can I cast twice? You can uh, upcast it to add more targets. So you can cast it at a higher level than base level so that it affects one more target per extra level. All right. There you go. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's easier. Well, if they're deaf and they won't hear our metal. By the way, Onion, since yeah. I've been in the city for longer, yeah. uh, do I have any knowledge of maybe a workaround or something? Probably not, right? There's I, no, I probably haven't been... Yeah. There's no workaround, but you do know, and and good on you for, for mentioning that, you do know a street 
uh, where there is less guard attention. Because there are guards still patrolling, but you do know one where the guards usually get a little bit drunk by this hour, and it's probably easier easier for you guys to move through. Uh, so you can guide the party towards that that street if you want to. All right. Okay, then I'll say um, maybe we should get a less crowded place to do this strategy, I think. Um, I know a way if you all want to follow me. Let's go. Well, prove yourself. I just lead the way over to the to that street. Right. You guys move into um, what is uh, sort of the, the, the streets uh, here in the rise. Um, the, the road is about like 35 feet, uh, 40 feet wide, I would say. Uh, and and you, you guys, you guys notice that there are two guards at the barricade uh, in this section. But it's two guards in the barricade, it's quite large, so they're quite a ways from each other. And then there are two others uh, that were patrolling and are just talking to each other and holding bottles of something uh, while they're talking to each other up the street. Uh, so you guys could probably even pass through those two and they would not even know that you were there. <laughs> um, should we risk it? Yeah, I would say yes. On those two, yes. Then there's the other two that are right at the barricade. We still have yeah. to draw their attention away somehow. <laughs> I can't. Do you one. guys have anything to um, do some noise in the sky? Normally? <laughs> so they look up? <laughs> uh, it, yeah, like I can make a sound uh, with a minor illusion, uh, for example. Minor illusion can't create sound, smell, or any other sensory, right? Can. Can? For can. I think for for in her case it can. Okay. My cantrip, I don't think it could. But both um, of you can can uh, unite your powers and uh, do something <laughs> in the sky. Mm. I think. Oh, I think the idea is you can create an image or a sound. Maybe that's yeah. it. Not not both things. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you can create a sound. I can make a sound too. It's up to 30 feet. The range. Oh, oh or uh, the one on the right makes something on the right, so you can look to the right and the other one to look to the left. And then we go in the middle. It's like a and very we go in the middle. Space. <laughs> well, uh, we need to go in the middle because they are separated, right? They are. We can only go yeah. to Won't they hear go clink, 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 clink? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. But well, if we. I mean. Okay, can we can we roll a like perception check to see if there's like a real workaround or something? I have good. I, I uh, I'm gonna say yeah. Roll a perception right. check for me, Hasdra. All try. right, I'll roll I'll perception. No, 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 only Hasdra. Yeah, I'll roll. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah, there's something called the roofs of buildings. Yeah. <laughs> That's way too high. Can I throw mm. G up to the <laughs> you probably someone thinking. throw me? <laughs> you probably have to climb. Um, I mean, I have strength, I guess. You could, you could have to climb, yeah. but it is possible. If there's other ways you you want to try to get up a, a roof, it is possible. I mean, you, you from your I'm perception athletic. check, there are no guards on the roof. They're just here on the barricades. I am not a ninja. I'm, I'm a barbarian. <laughs> I'm a heavy bullet. <laughs> I didn't. You, all right. Okay. Perhaps yeah. you can if come we, with me. If we were to climb up mm -hmm. onto a roof. Well, I do have good stealth. And then bonus. I could pull D up with the rope. <laughs> I have good stealth bonus, actually. How how proficient are we with uh, with climbing and sneaking it, around? And I'm super good at athletics. Then you could probably, right. if you have athletics, you can climb it. So, guys, I'm going to say this. While you guys figure out this very difficult conundrum, we're gonna mm. close out the session here so that you have a week to discuss how you're going to be two guards. I will totally oh. forget how in a week two, what I wanted to how, do. How five level 11 characters are going to beat two city guards in, in the I don't sneaking. wanna murder them! <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, wanna I fucking know. fight them! You don't have to! I'm not saying you have to. You guys don't have to. You have many ways you can do this. I just want you guys to have the week to think as we're about, uh, we're on the time. Um, for the session, so you have a whole week to think about this complex puzzle that I've set in front of you, apparently that I wasn't expecting. Uh, but um, but yeah, you you'll have the week. Uh, great job and welcome, Mick, uh, to um, to the group. 
Thank you very Thank much you. for playing. I want to retcon that shit show of an introduction that <laughs> happened. <laughs> hey man, it all it's canon. Hasdral is a little bit lost. Um, uh, Hasdral is a little bit lost in his head. You I, know. Felt, I felt a persuasion check. We'll just call it that. Yeah, let's just say that. Yeah, you yeah. were rolling for yourself and you failed. Um, yeah. but, uh, good job, guys. This was probably the biggest clownery of a session <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but it was really, it was fun. I had, I had honor. really good giggles here. Um, as G discovers his, uh, his interest in dragons, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, good job, guys. You have a whole week now to, to figure this out. I would like to remind everybody watching, the next session will be on Sunday at the same time. Uh, the video for this one will be available on the next Monday for all those watching live. And if you're watching on YouTube, nice. What is that? It's G trying to hold his eyes. Giant eyeballs. <laughs> oh my Not God. knowing where to put them. <laughs> People on Spotify will love this one. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> There's a... Why, did you, why do you have fellatio written in big letters? Uh, in this <laughs> so I would not well, forget maybe. the name. <laughs> fellatio. Thalassos, okay? Um, That's fellatio now. Oh my god, man! It's it's just like <laughs> Hector. Retcon? It's Hector Penis again. I, I, uh, he has found the interest in man, jazz bass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jazz oh, bass line. That is old. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. Um, and we will be seeing you uh, next week. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with us. Hope you had a good giggle, uh, and hopefully. Uh, next time we'll come back to this and both those guards will stay living because uh, they're just they're just little guards sure don't, don't miss us missing the athletics check and breaking our necks and dying <laughs> come what? on man you guys are adventurers surely you can climb a building surely uh, but sure. all right cool. bye bye guys take care and bye. we'll be seeing you on the next session bye bye, -bye. Ciao. yeah